Hey everyone, Insane Frame here with a disclaimer and an apology about the video. There was a problem with some corrupt MP4 video footage, however I did what I could to fix it as best I can. So just to warn you, there will be some choppy and strange footage during the video. Very sorry about that, I thought better to use the footage than to scrap the video entirely. Again, my sincerest apologies, but I hope you can still enjoy the video, and thank you for your patience and understanding. I just hope the video is to your liking. Hello everyone, Insane Frame here, welcome to another video. In our last video, we did Fallout 4 as the Mechanist, it was very interesting to say the least, and pretty cool. But in today's episode, we go over to the XCOM series, and specifically XCOM 2, and we ask the question... Can you beat XCOM 2 with a single soldier? Now this challenge is going to be ridiculously difficult and extremely brutal, as XCOM is a turn-based strategy game where you use a team of 4-6 to six soldiers per mission, however using a single soldier is going to be very difficult as well as cut all our firepower and all our abilities to just one individual in a turn-based game. So we're going to have to pick our class very wisely and think about how to optimise our soldier for the best results. Also we need to make sure we're not getting injured so it's going to be interesting and as a side note i've never completed xcom 2 so this will be the base game not the war of the chosen just to get that little tidbit out of the way so without further ado let us go over the rules we can only use a single soldier in missions excluding the first mission no glitches or exploits, no cheating or modding and we're going to be playing on veteran difficulty which is the game's normal difficulty we start the game one up and we decide that we're going to be playing on veteran difficulty. We also remove the tutorial, we won't enable Iron Man as I don't think I'm quite ready for that yet, but we also go ahead and continue about the DLC missions and we get thrown into our first mission almost immediately. It goes fantastic as we get into position and get a multi-kill grenade which is lovely and we also throw a couple more grenades making this mission really easy. We get Dr. Brainwash, play some charges, cigar and jaw and get our first victory. At base we get a promotion and we are looking for two specific classes for our soldier which is Grenadier or Sharpshooter. For us manages to get the Sharpshooter class so we lock and load with him and we dismiss all our other soldiers so we are now stuck with one soldier versus a alien invasion. Good luck for us Firejacket Odinson because the challenge has just begun. We get our first cutscene with Chief Scientist Tygon and get a hybrid aliens materials research started. Next is Dr. Lily Shen, the daughter of the late Dr. Shen and the cutscene is pretty cool. We immediately construct a Shadow Keeper and a flashbang for the early game. And lastly we have Central Officer Bradford from XCOM Enemy Within. It's been 20 years since that game and he's now a hardened war veteran. We're introduced to the world map to launch our operations and we get our first Gorilla Ops. Our reward is an engineer so we get to it. Our mission starts as standard as we sneak to a position, we take a shot which is great but the sectoid panics us and in our panic we do kill the sectoid to remove the panic which is really odd. And we kill a trooper, reinforcements come in, we fall back and we use our sniper to start picking off the enemy one by one. Then we take a page out of Michael Bay's book and shoot an explosive barrel to blast open an entrance on the side of the building and flashbang the sectoid for no nonsense and get to it. It gets to half HP before the sectoid disorientates us and we take it out by shooting another fuel tank. We get back to base and have a promotion. Those of you new to XCOM, soldiers gain promotions in their respective class and gain abilities based on that class, so we go ahead and get return fire. So we can now fire back at the enemy once per turn with our pistol when they shoot us. The rebel representative is introduced to us who says we need to get the rebellion organised and deployed against the alien overlords. We get our engineer and begin clearing the debris in the ship and we also begin constructing a power relay to provide power for future proofing. We also get our first council mission and there is a scientist and intel as a reward. So we get to the mission and we begin with the VIP and we get about halfway through the mission until our enemies are spotted. Our scientist gets hit with a projectile but evacs out and shortly after our soldier gets evac'd out too. Once back at base the scientist and intel is awarded to us and we get to building a laboratory and put the engineer to work on it so it'll only take 10 days to build. A cutscene plays and we see Bradford getting irritated to say the least but this cutscene signals our first retaliation mission. And in our current situation we can't take on the mission as a couple of aliens we can't take out. So we're sitting this one out despite the consequences. We managed to go back to HQ and recruit a scientist decreasing our research time by 25%. 
Our weapons research gets completed so we can upgrade our pistol, up and our damage in the form of a enhanced shadow keeper. We keep going with our research and go for gorse weaponry and not before we have another gorilla ops mission and we get lucky as we can counter a dangerous dark vent which is a UFO hunt which will just hunt the ship down and then just kill us. On top of that we get a generous amount of supply so on to that mission. We manage to get a decent kill on a melee unit known as a Lancer. We get a sniper shot off to injure a second Lancer. Then we have a Sectoid which uses its mind tricks to make us panic, which is super annoying. But we use our Shadow Keeper to reconceal ourselves to get an advantage. And we manage to get to cover an Overwatch against the Advent Officer. And our return fire manages to put him out of his misery. We go toe to toe with a Sectoid and get a crit on the Sectoid. It misses his shot on us. And we flank it and jobs are good. Him. He drops some items, including a data catch and an Illyrian core, which is amazing. We make our way to the transmitter. We manage to hit a trooper and a second Sectoid panics us. But we shoot the trooper and the little dusty fellow does prove difficult. But we manage to put him down, finishing the mission. With our victory in hand, we come on back to base and we have a promotion. We unlock one of our most useful abilities, which is Lightning Hands, allowing us to use an additional attack. It has a free turn cooldown, but an extra attack is always nice. We get supplies and thankfully countered the UFO hunt, as that ended the last attempt on this challenge. We upgrade our power plant, which is excellent, and the construction of the lab is finished. We upgrade it so we can stuff it with two scientists, reducing research time by an additional 37%, which is very significant. We also complete Gorse Weaponry, which is excellent, and move on to more research. It's time for a raid mission and we get a glorious sight which is a dead trooper due to the Shadow Keeper. This allows us to reconceal ourselves and snipe a viper and use lightning hands to finish the darn thing off. We also see something that takes precedence and is our number one priority and that is the enemy turret. We quickly knock it out of action as it really didn't stand a chance as we hard counter it. We bump into another patrol and we have two lancers and a viper. We get running and take pop shots at the viper and crit it and there's plenty more where that came from. We also do the same to the lancers through pop shots and return fire and we also get some loot which is excellent. However, we have the boss of the area, the Viper King. The Viper King isn't actually that bad, so its reaction is its weakness, so we climb a building, so it has to go around and we can just keep shooting it. We repeat the process until it teleports away, making us the king of the castle. We get back with a truckload of loot and we immediately build the enhanced Shadow Keeper, upping our base damage, which is brilliant. Tiger then has a cutscene with us about the extracted technology, which is pretty cool, and we research the turret autopsy ASAP. The black market is unlocked and we hit the jackpot in the form of rushed plated armor research. We also buy a laser sight as well as some supplies for building. And speaking of building, we begin constructing the proving ground. We also finish the turret research, unlocking the defense matrix, and we begin research on plated armor, so everything is looking good. A stroke of luck comes our way as a council mission with some very lucrative rewards is thrown our way. We get to the mission immediately, we get a very nice map and we see our first enemy mech. We use our grenades to shred some of its armour and in XCOM 2 enemies have armour in the form of yellow pips next to their health which mitigates damage by a flat amount so bypassing it is quite important. However, the sectoid is up to its old mind tricks and makes for us panic. So we get revenge and strike it down to stop any more mind games. The mech is also dealt with as we advance towards the VIP. We meet a Lancer and a Sectoid. The Lancer is shot, then misses its attack, dying to return fire. The Sectoid is very unlucky as it gets double critted thanks to using lightning hands. The VIP gets evac'd out and our soldier follows suit, netting us a win. Back at base we also get a promotion so we decide to go for quick draw. A very good skill for it now makes our pistol no longer consume an action if it's our first action. Pretty good as we can now make another attack if we so choose. Our reward for the mission is an engineer and intel which is extraordinarily welcome addition so we get our new engineer clearing debris. Plated armour is also researched as well as communications. It's grill ops time and we go for it as we know the drill by now. We start out and have the opportunity for an explosion. We use lightning hands to take the shot and kill two enemies. Some enemies are on the roof but we make it to the device and shoot a lancer. We get a return fire off which injures one of the lancers and they both missed thankfully so next turn they're both taken out. An insectoid is also on the receiving end of our attack and meets its demise. We then get to find the Viper King again and we manage to use our grenade to make it fall through the floor. We unload everything we have at it, severely injuring it before it runs away yet again. We get Dr. Brainwash as a recruit again but unfortunately due to the rules we have to dismiss him but he's welcome to chill aboard the ship.
We get an engineer from HQ and we also begin research on the spider suit as well as some other fun toys from the proving grounds. More good news as we get the defense matrix up and running uh, which is a huge relief just in case the worst happens. We get another retaliation mission which is great as we're running out of supplies. Unlike the first mission we're actually prepared for this one so we suit up and get boots on the ground. In retaliation missions, it's our job to rescue civilians whilst beating back alien forces. Our objective is twofold. We use the Shadow Keeper to gain concealment by killing a trooper, and we use our stealth to rescue many civilians. We also see a perfect opportunity for a grenade and we watch the fireworks and also the sectoid gets a taste of return fire, killing him in the process, whilst the Mouton gets lightning hands, killing him. We shoot a explosive barrel for a laugh but a faceless was hit within its vicinity so we did a good thing. We managed to take it out in a single turn, we also get a mech greet us, it gets a similar treatment and another faceless shows up and we use three attacks in one turn on it so it really didn't stand a chance, allowing us to win and completing the mission. Aboard our ship we have a promotion and this ability is why I picked Sharpshooter as one of our classes. Face off is an ability that allows us to attack every unit we can see. It has a 4 turn cooldown but it's just too good to pass up. We sell some stuff to the black market, make contact with South Africa, we set our engineers to build in a workshop and do some more salvaging. We also get the spider suit from the proven grounds which is amazing. We get the workshop online and we also build the advanced warfare center so all really really good stuff. We get Gorilla Ops again and we want to counter Advent's armor from the dark vent so we go ahead and select the corresponding operation. We change our loadout and equip the soldier with the spider suit giving us extra movement in the form of a grappling hook, very useful. We also install the advanced hair trigger for all it's worth so our sniper now has a 10% chance of not counting as an action when we shoot it. Our new grapple hook comes in very handy as we get on a roof and kill a soldier whilst injuring a Mouton on turn 1. We kill the Mouton and get into a firefight but the grapple hook is used once more and since it's a free action we can still fire our pistol as our first action used lightning hand followed by face off for 3 kills in one turn. A lance has the bright idea to try and hit us but as always return fire puts him down. We manage to hack the computer and even gain a small amount of alien alloys which is awesome. The enemy forces manage to surround us, we take a sectoid out and overwatch takes a Mouton out. We double tap a sectoid out of existence and the mech gets a grenade to the face completing the mission for us and we successfully countered the event, most excellent. No time to celebrate yet though as we have another mission, this time it's a raid mission which is always good for resources. So immediately off to another mission we go. Our ambush goes exceptional so we get 3 attacks off, injuring 2, killing 1. Then we just knock the guardian down and use our grapple hook to fall back and take cover. We focus fire a sectoid and face off just hits everything allowing us to do an absurd amount of damage. Unfortunately we do get poisoned however we kill both vipers no problem. The injured viper king shows up and with face off once more we manage to kill it and its minion. We have the last viper and we get a return fire off allowing us to kill it and complete another mission. We return and we are out of action for 7 days but we do get a promotion and major thrust goes ahead and learns steady hands. So if we don't move we get plus 10 aim and plus 10 crit chance. A subtle yet very very useful perk as extra aim and crit are always good. And meanwhile in engineering we unlock gas grenades. We also gain another engineer thanks to the world map and in the black market we purchased the Rush Illyrian for 20 intel. A absolute bargain. We also purchased an engineer from HQ so very productive indeed. And then it's time for a council mission next and it's to eliminate a target so we equip our new gas grenade and set off. Our rival is quickly greeted by a viper and Mouton both are very quickly dealt with. However we are in for a rude awakening as the berserker queen shows up which is a lot worse than a viper king as it can one shot us. We use our gas grenade to shred what we can of its armour as well as poisoning it and hit it with all of our abilities. Unfortunately we also meet up with enemy forces so we got to think a little bit so we jump from the roof to the ground and say hello to the VIP. We use our grapple hook to gain some distance and we take a shot at a barrel to shred more of the berserker queen's armour. But we use our shadow keeper to quickly conceal ourselves and make a break for it, getting our ass out of there. It was incredibly stressful but mission accomplished and we get a bunch of supplies so all in all very good. Our research with the Illyrium is done so we get plasma rifle research underway. We also make contact with New Chile which is excellent, we head to the black market and get a good find in the form of 38 Illyrium and a superior laser sight. 
The Avatar Project, however, fills up and we have hit the end point as we have 18 days to knock the Avatar Project back. But don't worry, it's all part of the plan and it signals that it's time for us to go on the offensive. So we decide to assault the facility in Chile and with Frost looking amazing, we go ahead and deploy. We locate the enemy, it couldn't have gone better even if we tried as we deal with them no problem. And we end up with a Shadow Keeper to reconceal ourselves. We manage to use the grapple hook to get inside the facility, but we get spotted. We have to fall back outside and we grapple hook to safety and start running away as the Vipers can one shot us. This took several attempts, but we eventually managed to run so far that we began picking the problematic enemies are. Lightning hands the lifesaver here and saved our ass but we go in and begin mopping the floor with the enemies and we managed to place the charges to then evac out. Really difficult but still it couldn't have gone much worse. With the alien facility destroyed the doomsday clock is reset however Gorilla Ops hits us in the face. The mission opens up and we kill the first patrol, no problem, by using our abilities to quickly deal with them. We get close to the objective and deploy our gas grenade to do severe damage whilst trying to focus on the objective. We manage to get to it with one turn to spare, however we see the Berserker Queen again, but it kills a Mouton which is handy, yet scary. We try to use the Shadow Keeper but it fails, however in horror movie fashion the Berserker Queen kills the officer. So we just decide to make a break for it and we do a lap of the map and nothing is left so I think it did our job for us but we go to the age old tactic of finding a roof and standing on top of it and switch into another roof to deal with the Berserker Queen. Once it makes its escape we're home free and we get back to base and our final promotion to Colonel rank. Our ability here is called Fanfire and what it allows us to do is to spend one action to attack three times. Very simple but extremely powerful and it has a four turn cooldown. We begin getting all hands on deck to build a relays com. We've also finished research on plasma weaponry and we get the plasma sniper research started and we purchase the powered shadow keeper up in our base damage a touch a retaliation mission comes for us and we meet a regular berserker this time but we use vampire to do heavy damage as it only costs one action next turn we deal with the muton and the berserker we take care of more aliens whilst rescuing civilians another berserker decides to show up we use vampire to delete lots of health and we finish with face off to spread the damage around we get to the tar pit of fighting off advent forces but we come out on top we get two faceless coming after us but we grapple hook away and kill both of them no problem. This new shadow keeper is something else. We decide to retrain Frost just in case we have any hidden abilities as you never know and if we do have one it is completely random. But we get the resistance comms up and running giving us nine more contact slots very nice and unfortunately for us didn't have any hidden abilities which is unfortunate but still we have our kernel and it's okay nothing lost nothing gained west africa has contact from us and we immediately go and raid the present facility we equip the skulljack on colonel Frass and we go for it we face a mech and a advent officer the mech just gets deleted and we skulljack the officer we successfully hack him and a new enemy appears called a codex. However, our abilities hard counter it as pistols have infinite ammo and we easily deal with it as we do leave with a scratch but it's okay. We meet the Berserker Queen again and Vampire is our best friend and we deal with the Mutons and we also shred the Berserker Queen's armor more as there's more explosive containers. And with a second Vampire, the Berserker Queen is dead, thank goodness. We kill a couple of new enemies called Archons, they look pretty scary and can fly as well as melee us, so quite the enemy, but we manage to kill it no problem. We see the cutscene of the new facility, but we see lots of enemies, so grapple hook out and take full cover. The Archon says hello, but we shoot him in the face and we start killing everyone, and once we clean them out, we get the vial and get a cool cutscene. We then head to the roof and face off against two waves of reinforcements until the coast is clear and then evac out. The Avatar project has been reduced by two points, all according to plan, thanks to Colonel Frass Firejacket. Uh, we immediately get an autopsy done on the Berserker Queen as it's going to be hugely helpful. We also get radio beacon up and running so we can make contact with Europe a lot easier. We begin construction on the Gorilla Tactics School and in poetic fashion Gorilla Ops decides to show up. We have a scientist as a reward so we go ahead. Once deployed we see a codex enemy and vampire to kill it immediately. Its Mouton bodyguards can't really stand up to us and the cluster around the relay doesn't fare much better as they are carved apart from our attacks. We go up on the roof and decide to scout the area more and more enemies are on the receiving end of our gunfire. They aren't going to be doing much after that. 
We then get a faceless and blast it apart, and before you know it, the mission is complete. We get our scientists, which is excellent, however, the proving grounds give us what we've been waiting for, which is AP rounds. We also finished the Gorilla Tactics School, we decided to get some tactics, so we get Vulture, so enemies drop an additional item when looted. We also grab Lightning Strike, so we get plus 3 movement for the first 2 turns whenever we start concealed, very useful. And we save the best till last and get Deadshot, giving us a flat 10% increase to our crit chance. It's not much, but it could be the difference between killing an enemy or two when using our abilities. It's time to knock out another facility and we equip our AP round. We start the mission and we see a fight I didn't expect to see, which is the Archon King. It's the perfect chance to test our AP rounds, we use everything we got at our disposal and we manage to wound it by one quarter of its health. We back up and let Vampire come off cooldown and we do it again. Certainly a very frightening foe to be sure but we'll need to defeat it at some point. We get into a few more scraps during the mission but then we manage to get reconcealment. We head inside the facility and we go in hard and take out an officer and a guardian with superior firepower. Our return fire also kills a trooper which is nice and the officer had some very nice loot in the form of a advanced speed focus. We plant the charges and we head to the roof for evac and once we're back we're injured for a week. But we do get an advanced speed focus and knock two blocks off the avatar progress which is excellent. We staff the advanced warfare center so we're only out for four days and we do have to skip a supply raid which also bars us from Chile as we have now lost contact with the continent. The power armor research is completed and we get a radio beacon up and running and we get the alien encryption done to unlock the shadow chamber which we'll certainly need. North America is contacted and we get a council mission awarding a large amount of intel along with a scientist so we can lock in and get to it. We meet a upgraded mech and Fanfire one shots it no problem. Colonel Frost obliterates two soldiers and we get a lot of items from them. We manage to grapple hook out and we get shot from enemy overwatch fire for some damage but we get the scientist out and evac Frost out. We get back, we're out for six days but more importantly we get a scientist and a bunch of intel. We make headway into Mexico by establishing contact and we do the same to Eastern Europe opening the world up a little bit more. Grillops is here again and before we head out we give Colonel Frass a combat stim to give plus 2 movement which is huge. So we now have 14 base movement which is simply excellent. The Grillops itself is funny as we meet a new enemy called an Andromedon. We pick off its fringe due to face off, it heads inside and we take out the transmitter. Inside a interesting scenario happens as we fanfire a mech and lightning hand our new friend then we use face off to devastate an effect and we find some much needed Illyrian cores and return fire kills the elite trooper. Our amazing movement keeps us away from toxic puddles as we finish off the alien powered scuba suit. Their mission is success. We get a very unfortunate event and our worst nightmare comes true as a UFO shoots us down. This is the mission I was worried about and why we built the defense network just in case this mission hit. Anyway, our goal for this mission is to knock the alien relay out of action while stopping the aliens from boarding our ship. Usually Central would send reinforcements our way, but since we only have one soldier, we don't have any manpower. However, that doesn't mean we don't have help though, as we have four turrets maxed out to deal with anyone that comes close to this ship. They are actually quite beastly and not to be overlooked. We send Colonel Frass forwards and our turrets cover us pretty well and get some kills, letting us advance. Frass holds the line and slowly advances forwards and we have our worst nightmare shot for this mission. The Archon King makes himself known which is not good at all and we shred his armour and begin laying into him. Colonel Frass gets grappled and lifted into the air but thankfully the Archon King did get poisoned thanks to the Andromedon we killed. However, our turrets hit hard and fast and the Archon King returns the favour, kicking us in the jewels by taking half our turrets out in the process. Thanks a lot Archon King, um, we do knock the beacon out but since our defences are in tatters, we eventually get overwhelmed so we restart the mission. So on to attempt 2. We stay to the left of the map to avoid the Archon King, our turrets deal with the initial forces coming in and it proves very effective. We close on in the relay, taking little damage and use Vampire and Lightning Hands to take it out. The turrets do their job to a fine tee, giving us enough time to run back, completing the mission with a single soldier. We get the hell out of dodge and we complete the mission very swiftly. As an added bonus, we only got lightly wounded, so only two days out of action. Very nice. That was a night and day without attempt, so thanks Archon King.
We begin our assault on an alien facility after Frost has recovered. We pretty much bulldoze our way through. Unfortunately, a heavy mech does do some damage to us, but we fan fire it, removing it as a threat. We get another group of enemies. It plays out very much the same. Our sniper comes in handy, which is excellent. And we get another cluster, so fall back to shoot everything to clear a path. We plant the charges and run along, and we're only wounded for two days, so it's all good. We recover quick enough to do some guerrilla ops. We decide to block the progress of the Avatar. Apparently, the operation is in Liverpool in the UK. Anyway, we see some sectoids and a codex, where we brutally murder them without issue, and a mech turns into a toaster. The relay is dealt with and we meet the sector pod. Any XCOM player that's faced these know that these things mean business. So we run for cover and return fire helps us out and we use all our attacks to destroy it. All in all, that went really well. However, we still have to have some shock troops dealt with. So we counter them beautifully and we get back to base and the dark event has been countered. Excellent. It's time to begin research into the story mission, so we begin researching the vial we recovered. A cutscene plays and it's very disturbing. Anyway, we get researching another project straight after that and another cutscene plays and a codex tries to shut off our ship. But Dr. Tigan uses a failsafe to stop it. Good job, Dr. Tigan. We get ourselves knocking on the front door of another facility. It's going to be a tough one, so we begin. We meet a sector pod, and since it's alone, we down it without too much issue. Our new wrist mounted weaponry it shreds the Vipers with no issues, whilst also making an entrance. We have a few forces here, but they're dealt with very easily and pose very little threat to us. However, we have the Archon King show up, so we run for it. His bodyguards decide to chase us, and we manage to deal with them. As for the Archon King himself, we get into a firefight, and we chip away at his health. We get to the wire, but we manage to use lightning hands and go for fanfire, taking him out once and for all. We get to the stasis chamber, and we get the fellow inside. We do get wounded, but we manage to go to the evac point. We complete the mission, and we reduce the avatar project by two points and get some supplies. We get our monthly report, and we have been quite the busy bee with the resistance efforts, all thanks to Colonel Frost. Thank you, Colonel Frost. We finish research in the Shadow Chamber and we also get the Archon King autopsy started and we get a couple of important projects in the Proving Ground including Skull Mining. Guerrilla Ops comes up again and to quickly sum it up we kill Codexes, a new enemy called a Gatekeeper shows up, it's terrifying. The Gatekeeper gets destroyed in a similar way to how we kill Sectopods, we hack the terminal and kill a trooper completing the mission. We do get wounded and have 13 days out of action but we go to the black market and get superior speed. So we immediately give it to Frost so he gets a plus 3 movement which is excellent. Dr. Shen finishes the beautiful Icarus arm for us, so we go into the story mission. We pick off a codex, we do the same to a mech. We test our new grenade out, setting a Advent Officer on fire. We use the armor's special ability, which is called Icarus Jump, to jump to any spot we wish as a free action and avoid overwatch shots. Once we clear the first wave, it's time for some chrysalids, lovely little fellas, and we get back with our Icarus Jump. We hold off the chrysalids with our attacks and we get to a large structure, where a gatekeeper shows up, which is pretty cool. But we lob everything we got at it and we pull it down and a cheeky chrysalid strikes us and we gun it down, ending the mission. We had two blocks of the Avatar gone and we're out for a week. Gorilla Ops greets us but we have to skip over them which isn't great but makes a nice change. And we go to our lab and we've researched every single thing. We have no more research we can do here so we head to the Shadow Chamber and research the Stasis Suit. We go ahead and hit another facility and do much the same. We a uh, sectopod joins the party and kills his teammate, which is not sporting good sir. But we go ahead and take it down and we purposely leave the codex alive. This is the hard part as we skull jacket and we summon a avatar, which is very bad. But after retrying a bunch of times, the avatar runs instead of mind controlling us on its first turn. So we use every attack we've got to take it down in one turn, which we managed to succeed at and not giving it a chance to do anything. We beat back the reinforcements and do what we got to do and evac out. Our soldier is okay considering, so the game lets us know we have to examine the avatar, and we get a whopping minus 5 for the avatar project, which is great. Once the autopsy is complete, we get a cutscene adding to the autopsy scene, which is actually really cool. We also get another cutscene about the avatar, and apparently we are the only one that can drive the dead avatar. We also get our final cutscene with the rebel representative, who gives us intel about the alien tower and gets found out by some soldiers. Definitely not good. We get to the tower and we can select some buffs worldwide, which is fantastic, but we decide to go for squad reflexes, increasing our dodge by 33. We get overrides, we are immune to two attacks, and finally we get squad video, increasing our vision range by two, which is huge. 
The game gives us a prompt to say if we're sure about this, we go ahead on the loadout screen, we take a mind shield just in case a avatar shows up, and we begin. As soon as we begin the mission, we shoot a Archon and finish a scuba suit alien. We advance forwards and snipe a sectoid, add into the tally. We draw some attention and find an Archon and pull it out of its misery. And as for the Andromedon, we continuously shoot it until we can fan fire, no problem. We get our last enemy, another Archon, and it's panicked by our armor, so we get some shots off on it and knock it off the side of the building. It's a long way down there, pal, so good luck. We get to the console and hack it and we gain control of the tower. We complete our goal and another cutscene plays and the speaker is found out by a mob. They try and rush him, which is hilarious, and back at base we have Colonel Frost. And he has achieved over a Spartan of kills. God damn, that is impressive, you are a truly one man army, sir. We get the final mission straight after, but the game does allow wounded soldiers, thankfully, and Colonel Frass Firejacket Odinson only has one HP missing like the badass he is. We decide to take AP rounds and a mind shield as we'll need them both. The cutscene plays and we get alien DNA pumped into us and Central gives a badass speech as it's time for the final mission. Once in the final mission, we have two soldiers, but as per the rules, we can only use one. So the commander will have to stay put at the start to give no advantage of any kind during this mission. We see our first patrol and we fan fire the Andromedon and take cover. We spread our damage out and finish off with face off. We press forwards and we get a sniper overwatch shot killing an enemy. Then a sector pod is present and we manage to kill it, exhausting all of our abilities. We retreat to deal with the Archon and keep going and we have a squad of Moutons along with two Andromedons so we use face off for some excellent damage. We fall back again and thin their numbers one by one letting us carry on. It's a pair of Berserkers next and we take one out no problem and then begin running as usual. We wait for our abilities to come off cooldown so we can end the second Berserker no problem. We have two gatekeepers next and we take one out and do the usual picking off a codex in the process. We use our last Icarus jump to avoid overwatch fire and we manage to destroy the second gatekeeper and come out on top. Then it's time for some lancers next and there is the surviving codex and it tries to drain us for our ammo but we use its ability against the lancers and manage to kill them. We get to cover and the codex just to rub salt in the wound gets a small amount of damage off on us before we kill it taking us down to 4 HP. We get a cutscene with an avatar and I think this is it. So we spot the avatar and go on the defensive, it tries to mind control us, wasting its turn, as we have a mind shield. We return fire and hit the avatar, creating an opening for us, so we use lightning hands and fan fire to eliminate it. We take cover and our avatar is still at the start, so we do have a plan here as the forces keep spawning. All we need to do is spot the avatars and we have a stroke of luck as we spot both avatars. The bad news is they're surrounded by everything so we start making a run for it as the avatars will chase us and we can outpace everything thanks to our high movement but more importantly we can avoid the reinforcements. As we begin running the two avatars sure enough follow us along with two gatekeepers. We get to an area where we can use the higher ground and we use overwatch for our sniper to get a shot on one of the avatars. Our return fire also procs and makes the avatar teleport away. On our turn we use lightning hands to stop the Mouton from suppressing us and we fan fire to kill the second avatar. Just one more to go. We keep running and falling back waiting for our abilities to come off cooldown and eventually get near to the start. We get to a good position where we just use lightning hands and fan fire to kill the final avatar. Triggering the final cutscene, ending the run, answering the question, can you beat XCOM 2 with a single soldier and the answer is yes. Yes you can but my word is it gruelling. <laughs> All right, I can safely say that this challenge up to date on this channel has been the toughest thus far, but it was also the most fun and took me back to figuring out XCOM. It was like playing the game for the first time. It was really difficult at the start, but as we got our abilities, got more gear, it just took a mind of its own and it was such an amazing challenge. It really kept me on my toes. I'd also like to say that this was the fourth attempt of the challenge as the previous attempts ended in ruin, but taking them losses and learning from them made this attempt a success. It absolutely blows my mind that we could actually complete this challenge, but it was certainly gruelling and absolutely mind-bogglingly difficult, but such is the nature of XCOM. It just made the win all the more satisfying. 
Anyway, for the next video, we'll be going back to Fallout New Vegas for the Battle Rifle, as I love that weapon and it's a break from a hardcore challenge. But it'll be just as fun. And please do remember to like the video if you like the video. Uh, comment down below if you, if you just want to say hi and subscribe if you're new. Anyway, I've been Insane Frame. Thank you very much for watching, you lovely people. I hope you're good and everything is well. Send you in all the hugs and, of course, the hot cups of tea, all that good stuff. Have an excellent day, you wonderful lot, and I hope to see you again in the future. Stay tuned for the next one, as this is Insane Frame, signing off. Take care, everyone. I hope you have an amazing day and everything goes absolutely brilliant for you. Take care and have a good day. Bye-bye for now.